court of the same master. Glory to you, O Lord. After the Magi had left, the angel of the Lord suddenly appeared in a dream to Joseph with the command, Get up, take the child and his mother, and flee to Egypt. Stay there until I tell you otherwise. Here is searching for a child to destroy him. Joseph got up and took the child and his mother and left that night for Egypt. He stayed there until the death of Peter to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. How to read it, I have told my son. Once Peter realized that he had been deceived by the astrologers, he became furious. He ordered the massacre of all the boys, two years old and under, in Bethlehem and its environs making his calculations on the basis of the things he had learned from the astrologers. What was said to Jeremiah the prophet was then fulfilled. A cry was heard at Rama, sobbing and loud lamentation. Rachel bewailing her children, no comfort for her, since they are no more. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Let us all be seated and be sent to the moon. There are many realities that we need to confront about the feast that we celebrate today that is holy in a sense. First of all, is that many would attempt to destroy good people. In fact, he had attempted to murder Jesus. And he also had the massacre of the many boys in Bethlehem during the time. The second reality is that evil will never prevail over good. As they say in our time, you can never put a good man down. And the third reality that is perhaps resonating in the hearts of the Berlin family now, is that there is so much grief at the passing of a loved one. That is why the words of the prophet Jeremiah were fulfilled, as we have heard in the gospel. Rachel cannot be comforted because her children are no more. The feeling of grief and sorrow at the passing of a loved one is difficult to comprehend. That is why even if we sympathize, we cannot truly fathom the experience of a person who is grieving over the loss of a loved one. And so the Christian family will come together, not because we presume that we understand their feelings, but we are here as a Christian community of faith to offer what we have and what we hope here. And that is faith to bring us the veil of sorrow for any deceived and grieving person. And so to the family, this is what we offer, our prayers and the faith of the community. You know for a fact that just this Christmas season, we were blessed to have a priest from the Jesuit congregation in the person of Father Babu. And perhaps it is already known to many of you about his very experience when he arrived in Kabubao. The night that he arrived in Kabubao, he saw an old man standing in the porch of our convent, not knowing who the man was. And the following day, after the Misa de Gallo, I told him just to visit the Berlin family and to pray over the dead. And he said, sure, let us go. The moment he entered the house of the Tabiru, he was taken aback when he saw the picture and when he saw the man lying in state. And he told me, that was the same man who welcomed me last night. 
Father Babu has a third eye. And I did not want to contest him about what we understand as Catholics. As Catholics, we believe that at the moment of death, immediately, the soul of the faithful departed goes to purgatory. Were they away? The final coming, the final coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and the final judgment. When a person dies, his soul is no longer here on earth. In our understanding of Catholic and part of our doctrine, there are good spirits and bad spirits. The bad spirits would take the form of any dead person, either to cast fear, either to make people aware of their presence. But the good spirits would also take would also take the form of our beloved dead. Especially that the desire of the good spirit is for us to remember the things we departed in our prayers, to remember their good deeds in joy. Today, my dear brothers and sisters, the old and classic adage in the church, every sinner, every sinner has a future and every saint has a past. Church it loses its meaning. Why? Because the celebration of the Holy Innocent it speaks about martyrs who ha never had any past. Why? Because they were murdered as young infants. And so there's no past to speak about. But I believe the adage is true in relation to one. A sinner with the future. Why? Because before he left us, I was the one to listen to his confession, and I was the one to anoint him, and I also gave him holy communion. He opened his heart, and in opening his heart, I believe that despite his past misgivings and shortcomings, he was able to be reconciled with God. That is the challenge for us today, my dear brothers and sisters, that as we now bring him to his resting place that every sinner will have a beautiful future if we reconcile ourselves with God and with one another. And that the life of the saints will always be a testament for us that it is never too late to be reconciled with God and with one another. This is the peace that we hope for each one of us here. This is the peace that we hope one will be able to experience during the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ in the last day. May this be our consolation, may this be our hope, that our faith may continue to be firm, trusting that God will always reward us as we strive to live a holy life according to His will.